September 7, 2017. Putin offers millions of Americans free home in Russia as light of Christ dims in U.S. A fascinating Security Council SC report circulating in the Kremlin today recommends that the State Duma begin the approval process for a set of initiatives set forth by the Agency for the Development of Human Capital in the Far Eastern Federal District HCFE that, when fully implemented, would make available a free hectare of land 2.5 acres and state financial support to millions of American citizens and that follows President Putin's directive this week that foreigners having Russian ancestry, and who have a desire to work and create strong families, be allowed to receive free land, and who stated it is necessary to expand the opportunities presented by this program to our compatriots who arrive in the Far East from foreign countries. Note some words and or phrases appearing in quotes in this report are English language approximations of Russian words, phrases having no exact counterpart. According to this report, the HCFE was established in 2015 for the purpose of providing labor resources to the Far East Federal District and whose Far Eastern Hectare program grants a free hectare of land and provides state financial support to peoples permanently settling in this region, and that, so far, has had over 100,000 applications made with more than 28,000 plots of land having been granted and 8,000 others being approved and awaiting their new residents signing their agreement documents. The Far East Federal District, this report continues, currently has around 6.3 million citizens living in it about 5% of the population of Russia and comprises 36% of the area of Russia having a land area amounting to 6,169,300 km as compared to the entire U.S. being 9.8 million km and having over 324 million peoples and whose weather varies from deeply continental to monsoonal due to the enormous extent of the area, which is almost 4,500 km from the north to the south and 2,500 to 3,000 km from the west to the east. Most critical to note about the Far East Federal District, though, this report says, is its massive contribution to making Russia the richest nation in the world and whose staggering natural resource wealth of its main deposits of coal, oil, natural gas, gold, timber and rare earth metals have an estimated wealth of over $75 trillion. In order to fully utilize, exploit the astonishing wealth of the Far East Federal District far into the 21st century, however, this report explains, would require tens of millions of more citizens than Russia's current population of 143 million is able to provide thus spurring President Putin's call to open up the HCFE's Far Eastern Hectare program to foreigners having Russian ancestry. To receive Russian citizenship, this report notes. One of the hardest requirements for foreigners has been the law requiring proof that a prospective citizen has full command of the Russian language but that in the past has been easily mastered by those of Slavic descent. Slavic peoples, this report details, are the largest Indo-European ethnolinguistic group in Europe, and who, in their earliest times, were a diverse group of tribal societies who lived during the Migration Period and Early Middle Ages approximately the 5th to the 10th centuries in Eastern Europe and in Central Europe but who, also, during the 13th century, were split apart by the Mongol Empire invasions of Europe. During these Mongol Empire invasions of Europe, this report continues, the Slavic peoples were separated into two groups the first being those that formed the Grand Duchy of Moscow, and the second being those that formed the Kievan Rus. Though the Grand Duchy of Moscow formed the historical basis for Slavic Russia, this report explains, the Kievan Rus formed into the Principality of Galicia-Volhynia or Kingdom of Rus, 
and that by the last part of the 16th century further formed into the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth but that, between 1772-1779, the then Russian Empire was able to rejoin all of the Slavic peoples under one government. The Kievan Rus, however, this report details, during their centuries-long separation from their Slavic brothers and sisters in Russia fell under the sway, influence of various Western European monarchies who forced them under penalty of death to convert to Roman Catholicism from their original Russian Orthodox Church beliefs and who then labeled a great number of these Slavic Catholics as being a separate nation called Poland and that was established by these Western powers during World War I. This history of the Slavic peoples in Europe as it pertains to Poland this report says, is important to understand as for over 400 years, since 1608, millions of them immigrated to North America with over 5 million immigrating to the United States alone from the early 1800s to the beginning of World War II and whose estimated over 10 million descendants living in America today are classified as being of Russian descent under Federation law as at the time they immigrated to the US, they came from Russia as there was no country named Poland. The West's gross distortion of these Slavic people's historic past called the Polonization of the Russian people by indoctrinating them to believe that they are Polish instead of Russian, this report continues is countered by historical facts most especially by the Polish and Russian languages being nearly identical and whose only differences are stylistic and grammatical, and comparable to the linguist differences found in America, too, between its Appalachian English language peoples and the English spoken by the rest of the peoples of that nation. With millions of these Polish-Russian-Slavic peoples in America now eligible for the HCFE's Far Eastern Hectare program, this report continues, it appears that many of them may be susceptible to doing so and as evidenced by many factors, and that include their being choked out by a prevailing view among U.S. government bureaucrats that they have the right to search, seize, strip, scan, shoot, spy on probe, pat down, taser, and arrest any individual at any time and for the slightest provocation. They're living in the most litigation-prone, lawyered-up country that has ever existed in the history of the world, a place where frivolous lawsuits abound and horrendous penalties are the norm. Their top Democratic Party leaders now going full communist and calling for the ending of all Americans being able to own private property. These same Democratic Party leaders continue to purge their nation of their racist past history by their now shockingly removing the stained glass windows from their nation's national cathedral because they depict two famous Civil War generals of the Confederacy who are Robert E. Lee and Thomas Stonewall Jackson, both of whom were staunch Christians who opposed slavery and West Point graduates. And, most importantly, the light of Christ now dimming in America as new polling shows that, for the first time in that nation's history, its satanic godless citizens now outnumber Christians. This report concludes by noting that President Putin has, also, instructed the HCFE to ease citizenship rules for foreigners investing $10 million in Far East Federal District in order to bolster the Federation's technological might, power and that Putin had warned this past week was critical to the survival of Russia with his stating artificial intelligence is the future, not only of Russia but of all of mankind whoever becomes the leader in this sphere will become the ruler of the world and whose grave fears were raised last month after an eye singularity event occurred in the Perm Cry Oblast and that we reported on in our 7 July report titled Artificial Intelligence Singularity Event Sparks Fear in Russia.